Greetings, globelings and flat earthers. Today, we have a special for you right here. A Belgian brewed beer. I know 2019. Okay, so this is from the Okanagan in BC. It says here, our annual celebrity celebratory year and beer is back. Anno 2019 is a strong golden ale brewed with Okanagan pears and Indian coriander. Can you imagine? This thing's going to taste awesome. The beer is bottle conditioned with Bretanomyces Klauseni Okay. <clears throat> a strain of wild yeast that adds funky, fruity flavors and slowly develops over time in the bottle, preserving freshness and adding layers of complexity as the beer ages. Okay. Anno 2019 is re-fermented in the bottle, so pour with care to leave the yeast sediment in the bottle. Okay, so this is the beer. All right, so we're back in action. I'm going to pop the top off. We have a double feature for you today as well. So, you see that the star on there? Okay, let's go. All right. Cheers. Very nice. Wow. And it's a strong beer. Okay, it says here, Strong golden ale brewed with pears and coriander, 8.5%. 8.5. So this is great. We got uh, 750 mils here, more than enough to do the video. Okay. Just leave the beer there. <coughs> now, I just want to start the video real quick with the biggest debunk ever, ever, for the globe religion. Okay, this is awesome. It'll just take about a couple minutes to do, and you'll understand it instantly. Okay, so, and you don't even need to watch the rest of the video because that's going to be the second topic on the setting sun so i just want to put this at the front in case that's all you want to watch is part one that's fine so you know the sun you see it in the sky it's uh looks like like it's a dot okay you can probably hide it with the pencil eraser on the tip of the pencil <coughs> so what they did was the idiots they're so stupidly retarded. Okay, they took, it's called small angles math. Okay, go look this up on Google or YouTube even, tons of videos. So they take the angle, so they say, okay, that's 0.52 degrees, because you measure it with the sextant, and that's 32 nautical miles wide, and then you just extrapolate the angle out, okay, to as far as you want. So it, it took a bit of deciding. The sun distance kept varying, you know, in the 1800s from 4 million to 25 to 50 to 104 million. Finally settled around 93 million. So just to keep the math simple today, we're just going to say it's 100 million miles away. And when you extrapolate it out to 100 million miles, the 0.52 degrees, you get something like almost 900,000 miles wide. 
So we're just gonna say a million miles wide. So we have a distance to size ratio of 100 to one, okay? That math that they use, oh yeah, see, we got math, only applies to objects that aren't lights. Done! And that's the end of the globe. See, it was that simple. So just to bring a little more details in, take your lighthouse, for example, say it's one meter, the lens, okay? And well, according to how their magical shrinking sun works, it would disappear at 100 meters out, you wouldn't even see it. Done, it'd be like a point, like imagine reduction ratio of, uh, my God, 32 nautical miles over a million. Okay, it's nothing, it disappears to a point. That math does not apply to lights. You could take this lighter or a candle and light it and walk away several thousand yards okay and you could still see it the same as if it was 10 feet in front of you okay there'd be hardly any difference at all that's why okay when you're in the military and you're doing guard duty at night okay you don't light a cigarette ever if you think there could be snipers in the area right because they'll see you from even three, four kilometers, three kilometers for sure, okay? And you're dead, all right? Just like that. There was a video on YouTube like that. A sniper was actually doing guard duty somewhere in Europe. And he went, saw that, killed the guy. You couldn't see nothing on camera, but he shot and killed the person, came back. Yeah, hey, the guy shouldn't have lit up a cigarette. It's that simple. Okay, you could do it yourself. Take this lighter, okay? There's no flame on it right now. Can you imagine? Now I'll just put it over here. You can't hardly see the lighter anymore. <laughs> okay, imagine if I go a little further back, okay? But if I had a flame on that, you could go a kilometer back and you would still see the flame, okay? And so that instant debunk of the globe i am surprised that i'm the first one bringing this to the table but it's great i'm glad to do it um i got it right out of thomas winship's book yes right out of his book in the chapter at the end in the appendix and it's the guy who used to build uh, foucault pendulums dr Sheffer, who debunks them but he does such a total debunk of the globe religion and there's a paragraph near the end of his uh, treatise talking about this stuff so and and the Foucault how stupid they say it's because the earth is moving under the pendulum but it doesn't move under planes or helicopters or anything else only under the pendulum like shut up man these people are retarded okay so so that was that totally debunked the globe right then and there it is done okay the flame the light, the candle, anything, any light, your headlights on your car. And I have some footage that I'll also add. I'll make a separate piece out of this, but I'm gonna use this as the intro for uh, part two, which we're gonna start right now. So, hang on a sec. Yeah, so for part two, we're gonna, we're gonna do some, uh, diagrams I think or do we yeah we do we do need to so you know when they say there's this excellent demo that was done online and I really want to have some more of this beer because we got time ah oh, I love this location I'm at today it was actually it's kind of a military fort here so it's really cool. Um, let's just chat a little here. So what they're saying is that, remember there was that demo a while back where the guy took the light on the table and he had the camera level with the table, you know, halfway up the lens and it was a tiny bit below Okay, but he could still see across the top of the table and he was able to set a light. 
Other people have done that with the coin. And then you get these globe heads. They're coming on. Wah, wah. Um, the camera was, was a little bit below the edge of the table. Okay, that is nonsense. That is the stupidest, lamest, ridiculous rebuttal. It does not apply. And I'm going to prove that to you today. Um, and I also did that demo, so we're going to add that to the end. It worked perfectly. So you can see across the whole top. Now let's say I'm looking out here. I don't know if you could see it, but there's a mountain range up there. And I know that mountain range is way, way taller than me. So can you imagine? And the sun sets behind that. And so can you imagine if I'm doing the table demo and I want to replicate this real life situation and I've got a mountain range in the distance, how would I do it? Okay, the camera would literally have to be the whole lens fully below the table, period. There's, that is the only way you could do it right to replicate reality, okay? Done, there's no other way you could do it. So that mountain is way taller than we are right now. So it's blocking the whole entire lens of the camera. And you'd have to, let's say if that's where the table was, where that mountain is, the camera is at a distance. So that's what I did. I had the camera at a distance from the table on a tripod and you see me lowering it to just where the other edge of the table disappears, and maybe a hair below that. It took me 18 feet to set a light that was about this high off the table, maybe three inches, and you're gonna see that. So <laughs> it doesn't cause the effect like these retards think. It's not cheating or anything like that. It just means you can use a shorter distance, that's all, period. Okay, the horizon ramps up to eye level and after a few miles out, <laughs> you know, things are gonna start disappearing. Doesn't matter what you do. So, so that's it. I basically told you the whole second video. So you're really done if you have like two brain cells that work, one for your vital functions and one to understand what I just said, you're golden. You don't need to see the demo even, but I'm gonna put it on anyways. So, so that's that, okay, do you understand? Um, so let's introduce the demo now for the people who want to watch it. Um, and I recommend you do, because it's, it's great to see these things. Okay, I found a place on Earth, the Dead Sea, the Jordan Valley. Okay, it is, <laughs> you're gonna love this. And it faces west, and I got a sunset from this region facing west. Oh man, okay, so you're 420 meters below sea level, so you're in a wedge in the ground of the ball, let's say, okay, a wedge. And it's not even that wide, okay? I'll even be generous, give them 20 miles wide, and it's not, it's, it's nowhere near that. And so anyways, and then we're looking west, there's mountains on either side of the wedge, so when I'm looking west, I have the Judean mountains, and they're almost a kilometer up or so. So you're talking about almost one and a half kilometers in the ground. And my lens is at the very bottom of that, that wall, okay? And I, I have to look out and see the sunset, okay? It's crazy. And they're complaining about the camera that it was indeed a bit below the edge of the table. Okay, the, the lens, the middle of the lens. And you could still see all across the top. Okay, they're stupid, they're crybabies, because they have nothing, because they know their globe is dead. Okay, so, hang on a sec. This beer is so smooth, so beautiful. Oh, highly recommend it. Now, so where were we? The edge of the table. Yeah, so we're in the Dead Sea. And I'm watching the sunset. I even have footage that says three hour time lapse in one minute. <laughs> so it sets nice and slow, um, just like it would anywhere else on earth, believe it or not. And so the beauty is at that latitude, Jerusalem's latitude, it's the same exact as the northern part of the Dead Sea where we see the sunset, okay facing west um, the earth's going uh, just over well let's just say 890 miles per hour I think it's 891 whatever 
1.7, I don't know. Okay, so round it down, 890 miles an hour, okay? And, and you're in that wedge at the very bottom and you've got that big mountain in front of you. How long do you think it's gonna take for that mountain to just rotate like that and you're done? Okay, not long. I'd, I'd say the sunset should last maybe less than a minute, a few seconds. Okay, at going 890 miles, <laughs> there's no way. And you see the sun, it's like halfway set, cut off by the mountain range, and you got the reflection on the water going all the way to the shore. That can only happen with an overhead light, period. Okay, done. And that's the end of the globe, again, okay? So there's no way out of this. So I just gave two huge uh, black swans, or two bombs, whatever you wanna call it. The globe is dead any way you look at it, period. There's no curve, that's the first black swan. Okay, no curve equals no globe, end of story. I mean, in the state of Georgia and USA, as most people know, Zan Garcia won in court. The court ruled there's no curve, there's no Proof of a curve, no evidence for a curve. You can take that to court. Tell the globe hugger, show me the curve. Where's the curve? There's no curve. That's the all time debunk of the globe. There's no curve. Doesn't depend on the sun or anything. But if you want to go more into it, you know, we've got F over 2 pi. Go to flatearthclassroom.blogspot.com and it's the first page. You'll see <laughs> F over 2 pi, what that's all about. They basically tried to switch ball and string math for hoop stress math. Okay, what's going on inside the spinning object? There were three strikes. When you spin an object, it'll explode. Nothing can survive. No spherical shaped object, okay, due to the extra weight, because the math was done for the ideal case of a rim, okay, to simplify everything. Adding weight, turning it into a sphere, just adds more weight, basically and it'll explode sooner. So even if you had a sphere of solid titanium, it could not go a thousand miles per hour. Nowhere close to that, period. It would explode way before that. Okay, you need something small. The only thing that comes close is the uh, A380 jet engine, the fan. It's about 10 feet in diameter and it comes really close to um, that speed. Uh, yeah, and the force at the tip of each blade, and this is from a documentary by the builders, um, is equivalent to a 110 ton locomotive, okay? So that just, you know, that's F over 2 pi. And it's present everywhere, all around the circumference, at every single point. So the globe religion says in the ball and string math, they try to totally do away with the real math. It's called hoop stress. And they say, oh yeah, total center frequency force exists around the whole circumference. No, how can that be? Okay, that's retarded because the object explodes at a fraction of that. So you're done right there, that's strike one. You can't have total center frequency force because you explode at F over two pi, done. Strike two, they go, oh yeah, it's in increments. You know, this much of the globe is gonna have that much and a little bit more is gonna have that much. It, it's, it doesn't work in increments because F over two pi is the same at every point, an infinite number of points all around the circumference, period, done. That's strike two. And then strike three, radius. Their math, the ball and string depends on radius, okay? Big radius, uh, small centrifugal force. It doesn't work, radius cancels out. Done right there, strike three, done and dusted. That's the end of the globe. That's how easy it is to kill them with F over two pi. That's hoop stress math. How does radius cancel out? Easy. It's inversely related to uh, velocity. So it's on the bottom of the equation and then it relates with the weight. So when you increase the circumference, you're adding a little bit more weight. And so radius is above the equation. You cancel out the two R's and you're done. So F over two pi, does not depend on radius. The math that's going on internally in a solid spinning object does not depend on radius. That's strike three. They are done and dusted right there. And they, there's no comeback for this ever, period. Okay, 
just delusion, cognitive dissonance, and Dunning-Kruger. That's all they have. When you throw this at them, and they still persist in trying to defend the globe, they have mental problems. Case closed. And mental problems, I mean cognitive dissonance, because it shatters their worldview. Dunning-Kruger, because they don't know enough to understand maybe what you're saying and their limited knowledge, even though they might have PhDs and degrees and be engineers, whatever, it doesn't make a difference. It's still Dunning-Kruger and cognitive dissonance, all the same. So, we covered three. I said it was a double feature. It turned into a triple feature, okay? So, I'll make a little drawing, just have a few more sips, and then we'll get into, uh, then I'll add the, the demo at the end, and we're good. Okay, so that's how easy it is. Don't ever, ever, ever let anyone try to trick you with math and all that BS. Any math problems, they've all been debunked, all of them. So, so a globe head, anybody out there uh, wanna challenge me on those three debunks? You wanna put, let's say, maybe 10,000 to each one of those three? Yeah, I'm ready, okay. Come on. Yeah, I get all the worst globe heads coming to my channel. Just the biggest freaks. And you'll just see them, just see in the comments. My videos, you know, they only have some of just a few hundred views. And there's almost as many comments as views. Like these globe heads, you know, they're stalking me literally, I think. It's crazy. Like, don't they have anything better to do if it was such a joke? You know, why, why bother, you know? But it's because I strike at the core, you know, I, I take the religion down at the fundamental levels, okay? Now, and a shout out to some channels too, um, John Thor, uh, Phuket Word, Nathan Oakley 1980, um, of course P Brain. I'm going to put a whole list of everybody. Um, there's the crane operator guy, I forgot the channel. Uh, I can't remember everybody's name offhand, it's bad. But anyways, there's a lot of awesome channels out there. And a lot of them are just small channels and they're putting out amazing content. And uh, yeah, I have to do a video and I'm gonna put all the channels on that are awesome. Um, I recently found uh, Ball Busters, well it's Quantum Eraser. Yeah, he's pretty good. Um, and this Aussie guy from Australia, amazing. It just, from all over the world, this is so huge. I just, Flat Earth is taking over. Uh, <laughs> now I'm getting over this cold. <clears throat> it still hasn't gone away quite. Kind of seems to die. Then it wants to come back and I said, today, you know what? I'm going to get a good beer and I'm going to destroy the cold. All those bugs that are in this beer, boom, they're going to take care of it all. I feel better already. <sighs> so, let's do some drawing. You remember this map. It still looks good. It's been rained on and everything. Okay, so. Uh, okay, so we're gonna draw, not on this page, but I'll just show that little stamper there. Uh, I hope that came out. I don't know. Anyways, let's do the uh, Dead Sea right now. And we're just going to destroy this thing. Okay, so the only way it can work is if you have an overhead light, period. Um, and I just saw an awesome video, it was early in the morning of today. What is today? Tuesday? Isn't it the... 
the 18th, I guess, February 18th. Could it be? Yeah, 2020. It was by Phuket Word, and I just love it. And uh, we were talking about flirspective, okay? We're gonna own that term as flat earthers now. Flirspective, I love the word. It's catchy and it really, it's, it's a good keyword, flirspective. And it's just perspective, but we call it flirspective because that's uh, the proper explanation of perspective is flirspective. Globe perspective or whatever you want to call them is retarded. They don't even know what they're talking about. So he was pointing out how go to any sunrise and there's clouds in the sky, let's say, and then the sun is rising. And if it was a ball, okay, they should be lighting up the bottom of the clouds every sunrise. And it doesn't. There was no light. The light, light's above, but it actually when you're looking out in the distance, the sun looks like it's below the clouds. But it isn't. It's above. And it's lighting the clouds from above. Okay? And so, anyways, I just, it was a short little video and I just loved it. It's just, we're getting some awesome content in the flat earth these days. I mean, it just continues to, to flood the internet and that's what we need to do. Just review everything um, and just keep putting on the good content. There's so many good channels doing this. Um, and again, I apologize, I can't remember all the names. I should have actually had a list. I usually just don't bring notes with me, but I will make a video of the channels that I like. And, and I don't care if they might not even like me. <laughs> I don't even care. I like them. Uh, that's all that matters. And I think that other people will too. So, um, let's just draw this out. We'll draw the ball scenario first. So, you got your ball. Okay. And... You're right there at the bottom of that. Okay. Is this even, yeah. Okay, so you're right here. I'll draw it in blue. Hang on, the water. Show you where the camera is. Okay, so you're down here. Okay. And the camera is right there. <laughs> in that little dot and the sun is right there and you're watching you're seeing this part of it right there because you're watching this so so somehow you're able to see half the the sun i don't know how because <laughs> but on the ball look how stupid that looks already on the ball it's retarded just one little movement that way okay, if the ball went that way Okay, you're done. <laughs> It'll be nighttime in seconds. Okay, and you're definitely not getting any reflection on that water way down in there. Okay, so don't complain about demos that show reality the way it's supposed to be shown with when they do the camera and the table demo. And that's a great kids experiment. Anybody can understand that. So, so that was it. I mean, so for flat, just pretend that curve isn't there and you're just in that wedge. The light is way up here. Doesn't matter if it's far out, it's still above you. And if it's above you, okay, right there, that means the rays can shine right down in there. Okay. So it's a little crude drying, but it doesn't matter. It still gets the point across. And yeah, the video is longer than it has to be, but you know, I just getting a little social here. Why not? Um, I'm just surrounded by globe heads. You know, I don't have too many flat earthers to talk to. So I just, this is my uh, social life on the uh, internet, as many other people are doing, um, which is fun. So, let's see how we're doing for time. Yeah, I gotta get going in a few minutes. Um, might as well have some more beer.
yeah this is so lovely up here behind the camera where you can't see is a fallen tree literally snapped in half let's just go have a look at that I'll pop the camera off and uh, we'll go uh, do a little uh, adventuring here see what it looks like and there it is okay the tree snapped <laughs> and here we are there's the tripod look at that you can just sit on that and enjoy the Sun and that's probably what I'm gonna do the Sun's way up there and it's just a lovely place here you can see the water out there of course there's the mountains way out there <laughs> and uh, what else got the globe some uh, graffiti going on over here pretty awesome and yeah snow on the mountains filmed some eagles earlier I mean just just live in life man don't let this globe bullshit get you down we've won <laughs> we won ages ago look at the beauty here ah oh, it's just awesome here Okay, I had no idea it was going to be like this, but it is. So, just continuing to chat. Let's get this on here. There. Okay, so, let's make sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I missed a great shot of a globe head. I have to show you this. Hang on. Look at that. It's got the little hat on and he's crying. <laughs> the sad globe clown. Oh, this is great. We'll see if we can do it this way so we can get a good snapshot out of it. If anybody wants to have a lovely photo, there it is right there. That's a globe head. Sad because we killed this globe. There's no such thing as a globe. Okay. Let's get some nice horizontal footage as well. The globe is dead. It died ages ago. It never existed. Oh, poor globe head. His hat's fallen off. Woo. There's a happy face there. <laughs> this is great. So, yeah. Just gotta have fun with it. Okay, as long as you see that I'm having a blast. Not letting these uh, globe huggers control me. No. Yeah, got a NASA neighbor. Take her kids to the same park, and he's built a demo now, a contraption of the tilted domed merry-go-round. And we're gonna try that out <laughs> this Friday, hopefully this weekend, I guess, and see what happens. He's still denying the three death blows we gave to the globe at the beginning of the video the f over 2 pi um, the no curve the sun uh, the magic shrinking sun and at the Dead Sea how <laughs> you can't get the sunsets you get at the Dead Sea on the globe it's not possible it's physically impossible so yeah yeah I seriously feel like going for a swim, um, but I don't have time right now, but I will, and I'll bring a thermometer so you can see how freaking cold the water is here. I mean, it's not like Iceland, I guess, but damn, it's, it's cold. It's really cold, so.
Yeah, the magic shrinking sun. I just can't believe it. How anybody could fall for that. And how it just hasn't been brought out. You know? It's, it's so bad. I mean, it's such an obvious thing. Lights don't do that. Okay? If their sun was uh, real, I should have mentioned that, um, the whole sky would be sun. The whole entire sky would be sun. Okay? Think about that. Because lights don't shrink at 100 to 1 distance to size ratio. There's no change in any light at that ratio, like when it's at a distance. So if the lights, if the candle's 10 feet in front of you, then you move it back 50 inches. The flame isn't even an inch. So you move it back two feet. It's going to see the same exact uh, size of flame. And that was also proven on, uh, or demonstrated, not proven. We don't have nothing to prove in flat earth anymore. Okay, it's done. There's no curve. All the rest is just understanding our observations properly. That's all we're doing now. Okay, we're not proving anything. So, the one on the frozen lake, okay, you see the lights, they were at different distances close to the camera, and it was over eight miles. But then when you look at the footage, it looks like they're all in a row, okay? You can't tell how far any of them are, who's closer, who's further. They look the same, okay? That just proves the principle. Lights don't diminish in size in such short distances, okay? Distance to size ratio. And that's actually a huge distance to size ratio. You're talking eight miles. Those lights were small because that's thousands of times the distance of their diameters okay yeah and they weren't diminished at all okay and think about that so you've got a million mile wide sun okay believe me the whole sky would be sun in their model okay and that needs to get out there don't hide this okay i'm gonna keep making videos on this till everybody starts talking about it and F over 2 pi. Nobody is still talking about it. I'm going to assume the flat earth community just, they don't understand F over 2 pi maybe. Come on, I know you do. I know you do. It's so easy. But I'll keep making the videos till it becomes, till, uh, till I reach, you know, strike the right chord. And people just say, yeah, I can put that in my words. That's so easy to explain, you know. And I'll have different versions of F over 2 pi. It's got to be done. Okay, this is something that has to get out there. Um, yeah, and I want to put down 10 rock solid, you know, obviously no curve's going to be first. Um, what I just mentioned today about the sun, the magic shrinking sun, that's going to be there. Uh, the way the sun sets, of course, we see too far. And that's going to be one. And, uh, yeah. Things like that. We're going to get 10 really good ones. The Foucault. <laughs> Earth isn't moving. Okay, it's not moving under the pendulum. <sighs> yeah, there's a lot of black swans out there. Okay. You got to look up this guy, Hopper. He's, uh, I guess, a science philosopher, is that what you call him? And they talk about, you know, if only you find, let's say, white swans, then you have to say, you know what? I want to see if every swan is white. i got to go look for a black one. Are any, you know, are there any swans that are black or a different color? And as soon as you find one black swan, it's done. All swans are not white. So... <laughs> That's what happens with this uh, discussion of the globe and the flat. As soon as you crack the globe religion, just at one point, okay, and there's hundreds of them, but all you need is one, the whole religion is done, okay? They base everything on gravity. It's their God. Gravity doesn't exist. It's a theory, it's a story, it's a poem. The final arbiter is experiment go show us the curve please 
I want to see the curve. The geometric physical curve, it, it's not there. And that's a black swan. <laughs> there's no curve. Okay? Even, I mean, yeah, it's, there's no curve. The, it's just, it's astounding that people have allowed this scam to go on so far. It's all through intimidation and brainwashing from a young age. You should be totally offended, okay? That's right, you should talk to your school, talk to your city council, everything. Just don't vote for anybody, okay? Because there's a thing, like when there's no turnout in the votes, it's illegitimate, okay? Because it means the public is not interested because the government is there, we put it there. Okay, we put the government there. It works for us. We're supposed to tell it what to do. But it's, and that was in a Nuremberg, 1942. That was discussed at the UN. You know, the government is not supposed to tell the people what to do. We're supposed to tell the government what to do. That's why we put it there. Okay, so people think that if you don't vote, oh, you can't complain and this and that. No, I used to think that. It's the opposite. If you vote, you've given up your rights. That person you voted in can do whatever they want. You voted them in there. You gave up your right. But if you didn't vote, you say, hey, I didn't vote for that shit. No, I didn't vote for that. No way, I disagree. And that's why nobody should vote. Did they get all excited? Yeah, vote, vote, vote. You gotta vote. No! Okay, the TV's telling you that. The government's telling you that. You always gotta do the opposite of what they tell you. Everything they say, the opposite. That's a rule of thumb, you'll never go wrong. Okay, so you don't vote. That's how you regain your sovereignty and your rights and your power. So some idiot is gonna come in. There might be, let's say, 1% of the people voted for him. Then everybody can turn out and say, what the f no way, man. We didn't vote for that. You can't make that decision. No, <laughs> no way. You can't make any decisions. You're not representing us. You're representing your little club, your little minority. Okay, so don't get sucked in. This is crucial to winning this uh, war. It's a war on the people, okay? It's the Agenda 21. They got this thing for 2030. Look up Rosa Quarry, K-O-I-R-E, okay? Look her up. She talks about it better than anybody, okay? Period. So don't vote, okay? That is number one, period. Do not vote. So, and so that's how one step in regaining your power is not voting. Knowledge is another step. You gotta know where you live, okay? You live on a flat earth. You don't live on a ball. All that space and all that bullshit, nuclear weapons, all that, dinosaurs, all of that. It's all BS, okay? Everything is a lie, all right? And the CIA said that in 1981 at a meeting in front of Reagan. He goes, we'll know our plan succeeded when everything the public believes is a lie. So they tell you to your face, okay? They're telling you through movies, all right? Yeah, come on. So just doing a hangout here. I wish, I want to start doing these live, I think. Yeah, um, soon. That way I can see your comments in real time. I don't care if it's just a handful of people. That is cool with me, man. You know, just sit there and chat with another human being instead of just talking to the lens. You know, I want to talk in real time. That would be awesome, so. I think I may step up to that. Authentic Intent, another great channel. Um, Zoom Truth, another good channel. They, they get out there and mix it up with the people. Um, and we've got a local guy here in Vancouver, in New West, Flat Earth Fokker, F-O-C-K-E-R. And, uh, you know, he's doing his thing. Um, everything counts, okay? Everything counts. Before, in 2016, when I was used to talk about this to people, honestly, I might, I might have found maybe a couple people a year that had heard about it. And now, 
everywhere I go, on any day, I can find somebody who knows about flat earth. That's huge. But the thing is, there's a quote, and the people, you know, when they come across truth, what happens is they just walk away as if nothing had happened. You know, I was getting people saying, well, how's that going to change my life? <laughs> come on, how's it going to change your life? Okay, they don't get it. These people are still in the sheepfold. They find comfort in the pen, okay, with all the other sheep. Well, nobody's speaking out. Well, I ain't going to be the one to make that first move. The wolf is going to get me. No, nobody's going to get you. Okay, that's an illusion. Nobody's after you, okay? Sure, there's this thing, uh, gang stalking and this and that. That happens. I know it does. Okay, I, I know. <laughs> but that's okay. You know, some people, those people are martyrs. Okay, I know someone who almost lost his life. And uh, two people, actually, who've been affected like that. It's just... Forget about that. Just be yourself. If you're an everyday person, you got a good, you know, uh, you're integrated somehow in society. You have a kid, you go to school, you're working, whatever. Um, educated. The more you are integrated in the society, I mean, not that they care anyways. They'll still kill you if they want to kill you. That's up to God. Don't worry about that. But just... Don't, don't live your life in fear, okay? Just be free, be open. Just say, hey man, you could, I will never believe in your globe or any of your lies, your vaccines, your fluoride, take it and shove it, your GMO, none of that. I'm not even voting for anybody anymore, okay? Because I know what's going on. The more people that have that perspective, <laughs> that attitude, okay? It's a way of life. It, it's... You have to, you have to live it, okay? It's as real as it gets, okay? Don't just talk and hide. No, just live your life, okay? The least you could do is never vote, ever. Um, you know, and you could be, you could be secretly writing little notes, you know, putting chalk everywhere, flat earth, you know, something just to break down the psyche. It's called the Sun Tzu approach. Uh, Sun Tzu, it's spelt many different ways, but I think I'll do a video on that. It's a tactical approach and they're using that on you. So you can also use that back on them, <laughs> you know. Fight fire with fire is what I'm saying here. Because this is mental warfare, big time. That's how they've, they've got everybody mentally brainwashed into thinking they're living on this ball. <laughs> a ball! Think about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, this has been a lovely time here. Hasn't been too long. Here's the time. And I'm definitely feeling this, 8.5%. I actually feel like my cold is gone. Like I feel so good right now. Um, what can I say? Oh, I did, did I show you this graphic? The bottle's very well designed. It's just it's so beautiful. I will definitely uh, recommend this beer for sure. And it's in a glass bottle. I hate drinking out of cans, even though you saw me a few times doing that. I just, I don't prefer that at all, but it's okay. It's not going to kill you. Don't live in fear. Oh, I drank out of aluminum can. I'm going to die. No, you're not. Shit. You know, don't let it get to you. <clears throat> but, you know, don't do stupid things like smoke cigarettes. Okay. Any cigarette smoker who knows what's going on knows that's a stupid thing. I have a friend, I know he smokes. He knows. I can tell him. It's a stupid thing you're doing. He won't be offended at all. Okay, People who know, they won't be offended by that. Tell him. It's stupid. What are you doing? You're killing yourself. Oh, I know. 
I can't help it. <laughs> okay. Don't be afraid. Tell your friends. You're not insulting them. And fluoride. You know, avoid that. So cigarettes, fluoride, vaccines, right there. And try to avoid GMO. Um, if you can't buy organic, it should be organic, non-GMO. Or if you know the farm, you know, you don't have to freak out. It doesn't have to be organic. Uh, but certain things, you know, like cucumbers, let's say, peppers, celery, uh, lettuce, you know, these really juicy things that soak up the water and they're close to the ground, you won't be playing around. There's something called the Toxic 12 or something like that. Definitely, you don't want to play around with those. You don't want to uh, buy those. No. 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 You want to make sure those are organic. And even with organic, officially by law, it's allowed 15% GMO. <laughs> Dr. Blaylock, a neurosurgeon, pointed that out, took it right to their websites, and it shows you. That's a fact. And sure, if you grease the palms of people and you pay them some money, <laughs> there's people walking up the trail looking at me, um, it'll be 30%. They're, they're going to turn a blind eye. You pay them some cash, you're a big farm, you're growing things, 30% GMO we found. You better pay us if you want us to turn a blind eye. You think that doesn't go on? You're dreaming. Okay, you're living in a freaking fantasy land, Disneyland, okay? Of course that goes on. That's why there's a new standard, no GMO. But who knows, that could also be corrupt. Okay, GMO is the most corrupt thing, evil thing ever, ever, okay? Period. And it's just too bad that it's taken such a hold, all right? The best study is the Seralini study, and the best documentary is uh, The World According to Monsanto. And there was this shill, controlled opposition, Jeffrey Smith. I caught him, okay? He was flagging anybody who had the video, The World According to Monsanto. He tried to claim copyright. What a freak, okay? I'm, I live in Canada. You know, that was made by Canadian taxpayer money. And who's this mental case, coconut head, Jeffrey Smith, who was going to the campuses? Um, and I fought YouTube. I, I mean, you know, you can dispute if you, you know, certain uh, channels can dispute. Like you have to, I guess, exchange a certain amount of your personal info. Like, I don't know, but you can ex dispute um, if they verify you in a certain way, let's say. Uh, so I was verified, I'm verified, and uh, so you can upload long videos and you can also dispute. So I disputed that, I said, hey man, who is this guy? I caught him because I was building a website and I had the video embedded. And this was the old uh, YouTube, old times, and I have a video of this where they, uh, when the video was not available because it got taken down, it said who took it down. Now they just tell the channel owner, but before, it would show up. So you go to play the video and then it would be a fuzzy screen and there'd be a strip across the middle saying, oh, this video was uh, copyrighted, removed by uh, Jeffrey Smith. You know, that was his name. I said, what the f Who the hell does this guy think he is? And I went back and fought it right away. It got released because he had no grounds. And I've won pretty much all the disputes that I've ever had. Uh, maybe a couple that, you know, I didn't win, but almost always you win that, you know. It's this thing about fair use, but in this case, this guy was corrupt, okay. And I was getting that out there. I, I showed the natural news guy that. He did nothing, okay. He's the guy who who's uh, started up uh, Brighteon uh, for video uploads. I mean, I know he's well-intentioned in that, but he's weak, okay. He was buddies with Jeffrey Smith. He, he couldn't believe, oh, Jeffrey Smith did that? And, and he says, oh, if you have any noteworthy news, make sure you tell us and you know we'll, we'll get it out there. Yeah, right, buddy. Sure you will. Pff, come on. Okay, so that, I was disappointed by that. Okay, that was pathetic. 
He should have put that front of his website, Jeffrey Schill, controlled opposition. This guy's a fraud. Did he warn anybody? No. Okay? So, just be your own boss, okay? Be an independent like me and all the other channels that I mentioned, they're all independent. It's okay to collaborate, but just above all, you're independent. Okay, I might collaborate with someone, I might promote someone, doesn't mean they endorse me or I endorse them. You know, they might believe in, you know, I don't know what, okay? All right, I believe in Jesus Christ, period, okay? Genesis, 100%, okay? I lose tons of subscribers because of that, I think. But that's okay. I can, I mean, I care actually because I know they're making a mistake. But that's all right. That's all right. I'm not going to hide, you know, all the good channels. Zoom Truth, he was an atheist. <laughs> Look at him now. He's preaching in the streets. Jesus. Okay. How many people? Uh, D. Murphy, even though he's deluded, he drinks piss and whatever. Fine. You know. But, you know, he turned around too. And so many other people. Uh, it's amazing and uh, you know, I want to start maybe talking more about that the Australian channel I forgot this Aussie from Australia you know he's talking about Jesus as well and it's funny that all the people who've brought some of the most important truths like Dr. Blaylock you know they all believe in God like the Christian they're Christian and that's, that says a lot, you know. And Tesla, his dad was an Orthodox Christian priest. <laughs> Milutin Tesla. Okay. So, <laughs> think about that. And Tesla never got married because he said he just wanted to dedicate his life to benefiting humanity. And he knew that after he died, you know, his technology would live on. And we're rediscovering it now. So this fraud, this uh, idiot who is building the car and using Tesla's name, he should be sued. Okay, he, He's got no right to use that name. And I think the time's running out. So cheers. And that's the end of the globe.